Somaliland Somali, Somaliland, Arabic, Somaliland Somaliland, Ard al Smal Ard as Sumal, officially the Republic of Somaliland Somali, Jamhuriyada Somaliland, Arabic, Jawrit Somaliland Jamhuriyat Somaliland, is a self declared state, internationally considered to be an autonomous region of Somalia. The government of the de facto state of Somaliland regards itself as the successor state to the former British Somaliland Protectorate, which, in the form of the briefly independent state of Somaliland, united as scheduled on 1 July 1960 with the Trust Territory of Somaliland the former Italian Somaliland to form the Somali Republic, Somaliland lies in northwestern Somalia, on the southern coast of the Gulf of Aden. It is bordered by the remainder of Somalia per international recognition to the east, Djibouti to the northwest, and Ethiopia to the south and west. Its claimed territory has an area of 176,120 square kilometers, 68,000 square miles, with approximately 4 million residents. The capital and the largest city is Hargeisa, with the population of around 1,500,000 residents. In 1988, the Siad Bar government began a crackdown against the Hargeisa based Somali National Movement and other militant groups, which were among the events that led to the Somali Civil War. The conflict left the country's economic and military infrastructure severely damaged. Following the collapse of Bar's government in early 1991, local authorities, led by the SNM, unilaterally declared independence from Somalia on 18 May of the same year and reinstated the borders of the former short lived independent state of Somaliland. Since then, the territory has been governed by democratically elected governments that seek international recognition as the government of the Republic of Somaliland, Somali, Daulada Jamhuriyada Somaliland, Arabic. Jawrit Somaliland Dawlat Jumhuriyat Somaliland. The central government maintains informal ties with some foreign governments, who have sent delegations to Hargeisa. Ethiopia also maintains a trade office in the region. However, Somaliland's self proclaimed independence remains unrecognized by any country or international organization. It is a member of the Unrepresented Nations and Peoples Organization, an advocacy group whose members consist of indigenous peoples, minorities and unrecognized or occupied territories. History Prehistory Somaliland has been inhabited since at least the Paleolithic. During the Stone Age, the Duan and Hargizan cultures flourished here. The oldest evidence of burial customs in the Horn of Africa comes from cemeteries in Somalia dating back to the 4th millennium BCE. The stone implements from the Jalelo site in the north were also characterized in 1909 as important artifacts demonstrating the archaeological universality during the Paleolithic between the east and the west. According to linguists, the first Afroasiatic speaking populations arrived in the region during the ensuing Neolithic period from the families proposed Urheimat, original homeland. In the Nile Valley, or the Near East, the LAA's Gil complex on the outskirts of Hargeisa in northwestern Somalia dates back around 5,000 years, and has rock art depicting both wild animals and decorated cows. Other cave paintings are found in the northern Dumbelin region, which feature one of the earliest known depictions of a hunter on horseback. The rock art is in the distinctive Ethiopian Arabian style, dated to 1000 to 3000 BCE. Additionally, between the towns of Las Kori and El Ayo in northern Somalia lies Karanhagan, the site of numerous cave paintings of real and mythical animals. Each painting has an inscription below it, which collectively have been estimated to be around 2,500 years old. Topic. Antiquity and Classical Era 
Ancient pyramidical structures, mausoleums, ruined cities and stone walls, such as the Warguard Wall, are evidence of an old civilization that once thrived in the Somali Peninsula. This civilization enjoyed a trading relationship with ancient Egypt and Mycenaean Greece since the 2nd millennium BCE, supporting the hypothesis that Somalia or adjacent regions were the location of the ancient land of Punt. The Puntites traded myrrh, spices, gold, ebony, short-horned cattle, ivory and frankincense with the Egyptians, Phoenicians, Babylonians, Indians, Chinese and Romans through their commercial ports. An Egyptian expedition sent to Punt by the 18th dynasty Queen Hatshepsut is recorded on the temple reliefs at Deir el-Bahari, during the reign of the Puntite King Parahu and Queen Ati. In 2015, isotopic analysis of ancient baboon mummies from Punt that had been brought to Egypt as gifts indicated that the specimens likely originated from an area encompassing eastern Somalia and the Eritrea Ethiopia corridor. The camel is believed to have been domesticated in the Horn region sometime between the 2nd and 3rd millennium BCE. From there, it spread to Egypt and the Maghreb. During the Classical period, the northern Barbara city-states of Mosylon, Opon, Mundus, Isis, Malau, Avalites, Essena, Nikon, and Sarapian developed a lucrative trade network, connecting with merchants from Ptolemaic Egypt, Ancient Greece, Phoenicia, Parthian Persia, Saba, the Nabataean Kingdom, and the Roman Empire. They used the ancient Somali maritime vessel known as the Bedan to transport their cargo. After the Roman conquest of the Nabataean Empire and the Roman naval presence at Aden to curb piracy, Arab and Somali merchants agreed with the Romans to bar Indian ships from trading in the free port cities of the Arabian Peninsula to protect the interests of Somali and Arab merchants in the lucrative commerce between the Red and Mediterranean seas. However, Indian merchants continued to trade in the port cities of the Somali Peninsula, which was free from Roman interference. For centuries, Indian merchants brought large quantities of cinnamon to Somalia and Arabia from Ceylon and the Spice Islands. The source of the cinnamon and other spices is said to have been the best kept secret of Arab and Somali merchants in their trade with the Roman and Greek world. The Romans and Greeks believed the source to have been the Somali Peninsula. The collusive agreement among Somali and Arab traders inflated the price of Indian and Chinese cinnamon in North Africa, the Near East, and Europe, and made the cinnamon trade a very profitable revenue generator, especially for the Somali merchants through whose hands large quantities were shipped across sea and land routes. <laughs> <laughs> Birth of Islam and the Middle Ages Various Somali Muslim kingdoms were established around this period in the area. In the 14th century, the Zila based Adil Sultanate battled the forces of the Ethiopian Emperor Amdac and the First the Ottoman Empire later occupied Berbera and environs in the 1500s. Muhammad Ali, Pasha of Egypt, subsequently established a foothold in the area between 1821 and 1841. Topic: Early Modern Sultanates. In the Early Modern Period, successor states to the Adil Sultanate and Ajuran Sultanate began to flourish in Somalia. These included the Warsangali Sultanate. The first engagement between Somalis of the region and the British was the 1827 Articles of Friendship and Commerce between the tribe of Habr Awal and England. This was followed by a British treaty with the governor of Zila in 1840. An engagement was then started between the British and elders of Haba Gahajis and Haba Toljala clans of the Isaac in 1855, followed a year later by the conclusion of the Articles of Peace and Friendship, between the Haber Awal and East India Company. 
These engagements between the British and Somali clans culminated in the formal treaties the British signed with the henceforth British Somaliland clans, which took place between 1884 and 1886. Treaties were signed with the Haber Awal, Gadabursi, Haber Toljala, Haber Gahajis, ESA, and the Warsangali clans. This paved the way for the British to establish a protectorate in the region referred to as British Somaliland. The British garrisoned the protectorate from Aden and administered it as part of British India until 1898. British Somaliland was then administered by the Foreign Office until 1905, and afterwards by the Colonial Office. <laughs> <laughs> British Somaliland The Somaliland Campaign, also called the Anglo-Somali War or the Dervish War, was a series of military expeditions that took place between 1900 and 1920 in the Horn of Africa, pitting the dervishes led by Muhammad Abdullah Hassan nicknamed the Mad Mullah against the British. The British were assisted in their offensives by the Ethiopians and Italians. During the First World War 1914 Hassan also received aid from the Ottomans, Germans and, for a time, from the Emperor Iyasu V of Ethiopia. The conflict ended when the British aerially bombed the Dervish capital of Talay in February 1920. The fifth expedition of the Somaliland campaign in 1920 was the final British expedition against the Dervish forces of Muhammad Abdullah Hassan often called the Mad Mullah derogatorily by British, the Somali religious leader. Although the majority of the combat took place in January of the year, British troops had begun preparations for the assault as early as November 1919. The British forces included elements of the Royal Air Force and the Somaliland Camel Corps. After three weeks of battle, Hassan's dervishes were defeated, bringing an effective end to their 20-year resistance. The Italian conquest of British Somaliland was a military campaign in East Africa, which took place in August 1940 between forces of Italy and those of several British and Commonwealth countries. The Italian expedition was part of the East African campaign. Topic: <laughs> State of Somaliland In May 1960, the British government stated that it would be prepared to grant independence to the then Protectorate of British Somaliland, with the intention that the territory would unite with the Italian-administered Trust Territory of Somaliland under Italian administration the former Italian Somaliland. The Legislative Council of British Somaliland passed a resolution in April 1960 requesting independence and union with the Trust Territory of Somaliland, which was scheduled to gain independence on July 1 that year. The Legislative Councils of both territories agreed to this proposal following a joint conference in Mogadishu. On June 26, 1960, the former British Somaliland Protectorate briefly obtained independence as the state of Somaliland, with the Trust Territory of Somaliland following suit five days later. During its brief period of independence, the state of Somaliland garnered recognition from 35 sovereign states. The following day, on June 27, 1960, the newly convened Somaliland Legislative Assembly approved a bill that would formally allow for the union of the state of Somaliland with the Trust Territory of Somaliland on July 1, 1960. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Somali Republic. The state of Somaliland was a short-lived independent state in the territory of present-day northwestern Somalia. It was the name assumed by the former British Somaliland Protectorate in the five days between independence from the United Kingdom on 26 June 1960. On 1 July 1960, the Protectorate and the Trust Territory of Somaliland, the former Italian Somaliland united as planned to form the Somali Republic. A government was formed by Abdullahi Issa, with Aden Abdullah Osman Dar as president and Abdurashid Ali Shamaka as prime minister later to become president, from 1967 to 1969. 
On 20 July 1961 and through a popular referendum, the Somali people ratified a new constitution, which was first drafted in 1960. In 1967, Mohamed Haji Ibrahim Eagle became Prime Minister, a position to which he was appointed by Shamaka. Shamaka was assassinated two years later by one of his own bodyguards. His murder was quickly followed by a military coup d'état on the 21st of October 1969, the day after his funeral, in which the Somalian army seized power without encountering armed opposition. The putsch was spearheaded by Major General Mohamed Siad Bar, who at the time commanded the army. The new regime would go on to rule Somalia for the next 21 years. Topic: Somali National Movement, Bar Persecution. The moral authority of Bar's government was gradually eroded as many Somalis became disillusioned with life under military rule. By the mid-1980s, resistance movements supported by Ethiopia's communist Derg administration had sprung up across the country. Bar responded by ordering punitive measures against those he perceived as locally supporting the guerrillas, especially in the northern regions. The clampdown included bombing of cities, with the northwestern administrative center of Hargeza, a Somali national movement SNM stronghold, among the targeted areas in 1988. The bombardment was led by General Mohammed Said Hersi Morgan, Bar's son-in-law. According to Abu Jeng and other scholars, the Bar regime rule was marked by a targeted brutal persecution of the Isaac clan. Mohamed Haji Ingoiz and Chris Mullen state that the clampdown by the Bar regime against the Hargeza based Somali national movement targeted the Isaac clan, to which most members of the SNM belonged. They refer to the clampdown as the Isaac Genocide or Hargeza Holocaust. A United Nations investigation concluded that the crime of genocide was conceived, planned and perpetrated by the Somali government against the Isaac people. The number of civilian casualties is estimated to be between 50,000 to 100,000 according to various sources, while some reports estimate the total civilian deaths to be upwards of 200,000 Isaac civilians. Along with the deaths, Bar regime bombarded and razed the second and third largest cities in Somalia, Hargeza and Berau respectively. This displaced an estimated 400,000 local residents to Hartashaykh in Ethiopia, another 400,000 individuals were also internally displaced. The counterinsurgency by the Bar regime against the SNM targeted the rebel group's civilian base of support, escalating into a genocidal onslaught against the Isaac clan. This led to anarchy and violent campaigns by fragmented militias, which then wrested power at a local level. The Bar regime's persecution was not limited to the Isaac, as it targeted other clans such as the Hawiya. The Bar regime collapsed in January 1991. Thereafter, as the political situation in Somaliland stabilized, the displaced people returned to their homes, the militias were demobilized or incorporated into the army, and tens of thousands of houses and businesses were reconstructed from rubble. Topic. Somali Civil War Although the SNM at its inception had a unionist constitution, it eventually began to pursue independence, looking to secede from the rest of Somalia. Under the leadership of Abdurrahman Ahmed Ali Tour, the local administration declared the northwestern Somali territories independent at a conference held in Berau between 27 April 1991 and 15 May 1991. Tour then became the newly established Somaliland polity's first president, but subsequently renounced the separatist platform in 1994 and began instead to publicly seek and advocate reconciliation with the rest of Somalia under a power-sharing federal system of governance. 
Muhammad Haji Ibrahim Eagle was appointed as Tu's successor in 1993 by the Grand Conference of National Reconciliation in Barama, which met for four months, leading to a gradual improvement in security, as well as a consolidation of the new territory. Eagle was reappointed in 1997, and remained in power until his death on 3 May 2002. The vice president, Dahir Real Kahan, who was during the 1980s the highest-ranking National Security Service NSS officer in Berbera in Siad Bar's government, was sworn in as president shortly afterwards. In 2003, Kahan became the first elected president of Somaliland. The war in southern Somalia between Islamist insurgents on the one hand, and the federal government of Somalia and its African Union allies on the other, has for the most part not directly affected Somaliland, which, like neighboring Puntland, has remained relatively stable. Politics and government Freedom House ranks the Somaliland government as partly democratic. Seth Kaplan 2011 argues that in contrast to southern Somalia and adjacent territories, Somaliland, the secessionist northwestern portion of Somalia, has built a more democratic mode of governance from the bottom up, with virtually no foreign assistance. Specifically, Kaplan suggests that Somaliland has the most democratic political system in the Horn of Africa because it has been largely insulated from the extremist elements in the rest of Somalia and has viable electoral and legislative systems as well as a robust private sector-dominated economy, unlike neighboring authoritarian governments. He largely attributes this to Somaliland's integration of customary laws and tradition with modern state structures, which he indicates most post-colonial states in Africa and the Middle East have not had the opportunity to do. Kaplan asserts that this has facilitated cohesiveness and conferred greater governmental legitimacy in Somaliland, as has the territory's comparatively homogeneous population, relatively equitable income distribution, common fear of the South, and absence of interference by outside forces, which has obliged local politicians to observe a degree of accountability. The Gwoti worked with rebel leaders to set up a new government, and was incorporated into the governance structure, becoming the Parliament's House of Elders. The government became in essence a power-sharing coalition of Somaliland's main clans, with seats in the upper and lower houses proportionally allocated to clans according to a predetermined formula, although not all clans are satisfied with their representation. In 2002, after several extensions of this interim government, Somaliland transitioned to multi-party democracy. The election was limited to three parties, in an attempt to create ideology-based elections rather than clan-based elections, the executive is led by an elected president, whose government includes a vice president and a council of ministers. The council of ministers, who are responsible for the normal running of government, are nominated by the president and approved by the parliament's House of Representatives. The president must approve bills passed by the parliament before they come into effect. Presidential elections are confirmed by the National Elections Commission. The president can serve a maximum of two five-year terms. Legislative power is held by the bicameral parliament. Its upper house is the House of Elders, and the lower house is the House of Representatives. The lower house is chaired by Bashi Muhammad Farah. Each house has 82 members. Members of the House of Elders are elected indirectly by local communities for six-year terms. The House of Elders shares power in passing laws with the House of Representatives, and also has the role of solving internal conflicts, and an exclusive power to extend the terms of the President and Representatives under circumstances that make an election impossible. Members of the House of Representatives are directly elected by the people for five-year terms. The House of Representatives shares voting power with the House of Elders, though it can pass a law that the House of Elders rejects if it votes for the law by a two-threes majority, and has absolute power in financial matters and confirmation of presidential appointments except for the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. 
However, the parliament provides weak oversight of the executive branch. The judicial system is divided into district courts, which deal with matters of family law and succession, lawsuits for amounts up to 3 million SL, criminal cases punishable by up to three years imprisonment or 3 million SL fines, and crimes committed by juveniles, regional courts which deal with lawsuits and criminal cases not within the jurisdiction of district courts, labor and employment claims, and local government elections, regional appeals courts which deal with all all appeals from district and regional courts, and the Supreme Court which deals with issues between courts and in government, and reviews its own decisions, which is the highest court and also functions as the constitutional court. Somaliland nationality law defines who is a Somaliland citizen, as well as the procedures by which one may be naturalized into Somaliland citizenship or renounce it. The Somaliland government continues to apply the 1962 Penal Code of the Somali Republic. As such, homosexual acts are illegal in the territory. As of December 2014, Somaliland has three political parties the Peace, Unity, and Development Party, the Justice and Development Party, and Vidani. Under the Somaliland constitution, a maximum of three political parties is allowed. <laughs> Foreign relations Somaliland has political contacts with its neighbors Ethiopia and Djibouti, as well as with South Africa, Sweden, the United Kingdom and the micro-nation of Liberland. On 17 January 2007, the European Union EU sent a delegation for foreign affairs to discuss future cooperation. The African Union has also sent a foreign minister to discuss the future of international acknowledgement, and on 29 and 30 January 2007, the ministers stated that they would discuss acknowledgement with the organization's member states. In early 2006, the National Assembly of Wales extended an official invitation to the Somaliland government to attend the royal opening of the Sened in Cardiff. The move was seen as an act of recognition by the Welsh Assembly of the breakaway government's legitimacy. The Foreign and Commonwealth Office made no comment on the invitation. Wales is home to a significant Somali expatriate community from Somaliland. In 2007, a delegation led by President Kahan was present at the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting in Kampala, Uganda. Although Somaliland has applied to join the Commonwealth under observer status, its application is still pending. On the 24th of September 2010, Johnny Carson, Assistant Secretary of State for African Affairs, stated that the United States would be modifying its strategy in Somalia and would seek deeper engagement with the governments of Somaliland and Puntland while continuing to support the Somali transitional government. Carson said the U.S. would send aid workers and diplomats to Puntland and Somaliland and alluded to the possibility of future development projects. However, Carson emphasized that the U.S. would not extend formal recognition to either region. The then UK Minister for Africa, Henry Bellingham MP, met President Silenio of Somaliland in November 2010 to discuss ways in which to increase the UK's engagement with Somaliland. President Silenio said during his visit to London, We have been working with the international community and the international community has been engaging with us, giving us assistance and working with us in our democratization and development programs. And we are very happy with the way the international community has been dealing with us, particularly the UK, the US, other European nations and our neighbours who continue to seek recognition. Recognition of Somaliland by the UK has also been supported by the UK Independence Party, which came third in the popular vote at the 2015 general election. The leader of UKIP, Nigel Farage, met with Ali Aden Awale, head of the Somaliland UK mission on Somaliland's National Day, 18 May, in 2015, to express UKIP's support for Somaliland. Nigel Farage said that, Somaliland has been a beacon of peace, democracy and the rule of law, in the Horn of Africa for the past 24 years. 
It is about time the UK and the rest of the international community recognised Somaliland's case for recognition. It's about time peace was rewarded. For the UK to turn its back on their legitimate demands for sovereignty, is wrong. It is extraordinary that we have not been lobbying for their admittance to the Commonwealth. In recent years we have supported the admission of countries such as Mozambique which have no historic links to Britain, but Somaliland, a former protectorate is left in the cold. This must change. In 2011, Somaliland and the neighboring Puntland region each entered a security-related memorandum of understanding with the Seychelles. Following the framework of an earlier agreement signed between the transitional federal government and the Seychelles, the memorandum is, "...for the transfer of convicted persons to prisons in Puntland and Somaliland." Topic: Border disputes. Somaliland continues to claim the entire area of the former British Somaliland. It is currently in control of the western half of the former British Somaliland, with northeastern Markir having declared itself a separate, unrecognized autonomous state within Somalia in July 2007, and the disputed southeastern Sul state had been under the control of neighboring Puntland. A coalition of Gadabursi intellectuals hailing from the westernmost Ordal province have threatened to secede if Somaliland's independence is recognized. Tensions between Puntland and Somaliland escalated into violence several times between 2002 and 2009. In October 2004, and again in April and October 2007, armed forces of Somaliland and Puntland clashed near the town of Las Anad, the capital of Sul region. In October 2007, Somaliland troops took control of the town. While celebrating Puntland's 11th anniversary on 2 August 2009, Puntland officials vowed to recapture Las Anad. While Somaliland claims independent statehood and therefore split up the old Somalia, Puntland works for the re establishment of a united but federal Somali state. Somaliland forces took control of the town of Las Khori in eastern Sarnag on 10 July 2008, along with positions 5 kilometres east of the town. The defense forces completed their operations on 9 July 2008 after the Markir and Puntland militia in the area left their positions, but control of the territory was later assumed by Puntland as Markir was incorporated into the autonomous region in January 2009. In the late 2000s, HBMSSC, Hoganka Badbardada Iyo Midenta SSC, a local unionist group based in Sarnag, was formed with the goal to establish its own regional administration Sul, Sarnag and Kane, or SSC. This later evolved into Khartoumo State, which was established in 2012. The local administration and its constituents does not recognize the Somaliland government's claim to sovereignty or to its territory. In 2010, the formation of a new autonomous region within a federal Somalia was also declared in the Ordal province. Referred to as Ordaland or the Ordal State, the local administration and the region's residents do not recognize the Somaliland government's claim to sovereignty or to their territory. <laughs> <laughs> Military The Somaliland Armed Forces are the main military command in Somaliland. Along with the police force and all other internal security forces, they are overseen by Somaliland's Ministry of Defense. The current head of Somaliland's armed forces is the Minister of Defense, Mudain Ahmed Hujad Army. The Somaliland Army consists of 12 divisions equipped primarily with light weaponry, though it is equipped with some howitzers and mobile rocket launchers. Its armored vehicles and tanks are mostly of Soviet design, though there are some aging Western vehicles and tanks in its arsenal. 
The Somaliland Navy, often referred to as a Coast Guard by the Associated Press, despite a crippling lack of equipment and formal training, has apparently had some success at curbing both piracy and illegal fishing within Somaliland waters. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Administrative Divisions. Topic: Regions. The following regions are taken from Michael Wall's State Formation in Somaliland, bringing deliberation to institutionalism from 2011, Somaliland, the strains of success from 2015, and ActionAid, and humanitarian organization currently active in Somaliland. Topic. Geography Somaliland is situated in northwestern Somalia. It lies between the 08 degree 00 11 degrees 30 parallel north of the equator and between 42 degrees 30 49 degrees 00 meridian east of Greenwich. It is bordered by Djibouti to the west, Ethiopia to the south, and the Puntland region of Somalia to the east. Somaliland has a 740 kilometers 460 miles coastline with the majority lying along the Gulf of Aden. In terms of landmass, Somaliland's territory is comparable to that of Uruguay with an area of 176,120 square kilometers 68,000 square miles. Somaliland's climate is a mixture of wet and dry conditions. The northern part of the region is hilly, and in many places the altitude ranges between 900 and 2,100 meters and feet above sea level. The Audal, Sahil and Marudi Jia regions are fertile and mountainous, while Togd here is mostly semi-desert with little fertile greenery around. The Audal region is also known for its offshore islands, coral reefs and mangroves. A scrub-covered, semi-desert plain referred as the Guban lies parallel to the Gulf of Aden littoral. With a width of 12 km miles in the west to as little as 2 km miles in the east, the plain is bisected by watercourses that are essentially beds of dry sand except during the rainy seasons. When the rains arrive, the Guban's low bushes and grass clumps transform into lush vegetation. This coastal strip is part of the Ethiopian xeric grasslands and shrublands ecoregion. Kal Madaw is a mountain range in the northern part of the country. Extending from the northwest of Eregavo to several kilometers west of the city of Bozazo, it features Somalia's highest peak, Shimbiris, which sits at an elevation of about 2,416 meters 7,927 feet. The rugged east-west ranges of the Karkar Mountains also lie to the interior of the Gulf of Aden littoral. In the central regions, the northern mountain ranges give way to shallow plateaus and typically dry watercourses that are referred to locally as the Ogo. The Ogo's western plateau, in turn, gradually merges into the O, an important grazing area for livestock. Topic. Climate Somaliland is located north of the equator. It is semi-arid. The average daily temperatures range from 25 to 35 degrees Celsius 77 to 95 degrees Fahrenheit. The sun passes vertically overhead twice a year, on the 22nd of March and 23 September. Somaliland consists of three main topographic zones, 1. A coastal plain 2. The coastal range 3. A plateau Horde. The coastal plain is a zone with high temperatures and low rainfall. Summer temperatures in the region easily average over 100 degrees Fahrenheit However, temperatures come down during the winter, and both human and livestock populations increase dramatically in the region. The coastal range is a high plateau to the immediate south of Guban. 
Its elevation ranges from 6,000 feet meters above sea level in the west to 7,000 feet meters in the east. Rainfall is heavier there than in Guban, although it varies considerably within the zone. The plateau Horde region lies to the south of Ogo Range. It is generally more heavily populated during the wet season, when surface water is available. It is also an important area for grazing. Somalilanders recognize four seasons in the year, Gu and Hagar comprise spring and summer in that order, and Day and Jialal correspond to autumn and winter respectively. The average annual rainfall is 446 mm .6 in, in some parts of country according to availability of rain gauge, and most of it comes during Gu and Day. Gu, which is the first, or major, rainy season late March, April, May, and early June, experiences the heaviest rainfall in Ogo Range and Horde. This constitutes the period of fresh grazing and abundant surface water. It is also the breeding season for livestock. Hagar from late June through August is usually dry although there are often some scattered showers in the Ogo Range, these are known as Karen rains. Hagar tends to be hot and windy in most parts of the country. Deer September, October, and early November, which roughly corresponds to autumn, is the second, or minor, wet season. As the word minor suggests, the amount of precipitation is generally less than that of Gu. Jilal, or winter, falls in the coolest and driest months of the year from late November to early March. It is a season of thirst. Horde receive virtually no rainfall in winter. The rainfall in the Guban zone, known as haze, comes from December to February. The humidity of the country varies from 63% in the dry season to 82% in the wet season. Economy <inaudible> 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 The Somaliland shilling, which cannot easily be exchanged outside Somaliland on account of the nation's lack of recognition, is regulated by the Bank of Somaliland, the central bank, which was established constitutionally in 1994. It may not be considered valid tender in disputed areas such as Ain or the district of Badan, which are not administered as part of Somaliland and continue to use the Somali shilling despite being claimed by the Somaliland government. Since Somaliland is unrecognized, international donors have found it difficult to provide aid. As a result, the government relies mainly upon tax receipts and remittances from the large Somali diaspora, which contribute immensely to Somaliland's economy. Remittances come to Somaliland through money transfer companies, the largest of which is Dahabshil, one of the few Somali money transfer companies that conform to modern money transfer regulations. The World Bank estimates that remittances worth approximately $1 billion reach Somalia annually from emigre working in the Gulf states, Europe and the United States. Analysts say that Dahabshil may handle around two-thirds of that figure and as much as half of it reaches Somaliland alone. Since the late 1990s, service provisions have significantly improved through limited government provisions and contributions from non-governmental organizations, religious groups, the international community, especially the diaspora, and the growing private sector. Local and municipal governments have been developing key public service provisions such as water in Hargeisa and education, electricity, and security in Berbera. In 2009, the Banque pour le Commerce et l'Industrie, Mer Rouge BCIMR, based in Djibouti, opened a branch in Hargeisa and became the first bank in the country since the 1990 collapse of the Commercial and Savings Bank of Somalia. In 2014, Dahabshal Bank International became the region's first commercial bank. In 2017 Premier Bank from Mogadishu opened a branch in Hargeisa. Various telecommunications firms also have branches in Somaliland. Among these companies is Telesim, one of the largest operators in Somaliland. 
Founded in 2002 with the objective of supplying the local market with telecommunications services such as GSM, fixed line, and internet access, it has an extensive network that covers all of Somaliland's major cities and more than 40 districts in both Somalia and Somaliland. Telesim also offers among the cheapest international calling rates at 20 cents less than its nearest competitor. Other telecommunication firms serving the region include Somtel, Telcom and Nationlink. Livestock is the backbone of Somaliland's economy. Sheep, camels, and cattle are shipped from the Berber port and sent to Gulf Arab countries, such as Saudi Arabia. Agriculture is generally considered to be a potentially successful industry, especially in the production of cereals and horticulture. Mining also has potential, though simple quarrying represents the extent of current operations, despite the presence of diverse quantities of mineral deposits. Tourism The rock art and caves at LAA's Giel, situated on the outskirts of Hargeza, are a popular local tourist attraction. Totaling 10 caves, they were discovered by a French archaeological team in 2002 and are believed to date back around 5,000 years. The government and locals keep the cave paintings safe and only a restricted number of tourists are allowed entry. Other notable sites include the Freedom Arch in Hargeza and the War Memorial in the city centre. Natural attractions are very common around the region. The Naasa Ablud are twin hills located on the outskirts of Hargeza that Somalis in the region consider to be a majestic natural landmark. The Ministry of Tourism has also encouraged travelers to visit historic towns and cities in Somaliland. The historic town of Sheikh is located near Berbera and is home to old British colonial buildings that have remained untouched for over 40 years. Berbera also houses historic and impressive Ottoman architectural buildings. Another equally famous historic city is Zila. Zila was once part of the Ottoman Empire, a dependency of Yemen and Egypt and a major trade city during the 19th century. The city has been visited for its old colonial landmarks, offshore mangroves and coral reefs, towering cliffs, and beach. The nomadic culture of Somaliland has also attracted tourists. Most nomads live in the countryside. Topic: <transport>, Transport. Bus services operate in Hargeza, Berau, Gabili, Berbera and Barama. There are also road transportation services between the major towns and adjacent villages, which are operated by different types of vehicles. Among these are taxis, four-wheel drives, minibuses and light goods vehicles LGV. .The most prominent airline serving Somaliland is Dalo Airlines, a Somali-owned private carrier with regular international flights that emerged after Somali Airlines ceased operations. African Express Airways and Ethiopian Airlines also fly from airports in Somaliland to Djibouti City, Addis Ababa, Dubai and Jeddah, and offer flights for the Hajj and Umrah pilgrimages via the Eagle International Airport in Hargeza. Other major airports in the region include the Berber Airport. <laughs> Ports. In June 2016, the Somaliland government signed an agreement with DP World to manage the strategic port of Berbera with the aim of enhancing productive capacity and acting as an alternative port for landlocked Ethiopia. <inaudible> <inaudible> Oil explorations In August 2012 Somaliland government awarded General Energy license to explore oil within its territory. Results of a surface seep study completed early in 2015 confirmed the outstanding potential offered in SL10B and SL13 block and Udwane block with estimated oil reserves of 1 billion barrel each. 
General Energy is set to drill exploration well for SL-10B and SL-13 block in Bourdab 20 km northwest of Inabo by the end of 2018. Demographics Languages <laughs> 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 Many people in Somaliland speak two of the three official languages, Somali, Arabic and English, although the rate of bilingualism is lower in rural areas. Article 6 of the Constitution of 2001 designates the official language of Somaliland to be Somali, though Arabic is a mandatory subject in school and is used in mosques around the region and English is spoken and taught in schools. English was proclaimed an official language later. Outside the constitution, the Somali language belongs to the Cushitic branch of the Afroasiatic family. Its nearest relatives are the Afar and Oromo languages. Somali is the best documented of the Cushitic languages, with academic studies of it dating from before 1900. Somali dialects are divided into three main groups Northern, Benaradir, and Maay. Northern Somali or Northern Central Somali forms the basis for standard Somali. Benaradir, also known as coastal Somali, is spoken on the Benaradir coast from Kadeli to south of Merka, including Mogadishu, as well as in the immediate hinterland. The coastal dialects have additional phonemes which do not exist in standard Somali. Maay is principally spoken by the Digilan Myrifal clans in the southern areas of Somalia. Since Somali had long lost its ancient script, a number of writing systems have been used over the years for transcribing the language. Of these, the Somali alphabet is the most widely used, and has been the official writing script in Somalia since the government of former President of Somalia Siad Bar formally introduced it in October 1972. The script was developed by the Somali linguist Shia Jammer Ahmed specifically for the Somali language, and uses all letters of the English Latin alphabet except P, V, and Z. Besides Ahmed's Latin script, other orthographies that have been used for centuries for writing Somali include the long established Arabic script and Wadad's writing, in addition to various indigenous writing systems developed in the 20th century. <laughs> <laughs> Religion With few exceptions, Somalis in Somaliland and elsewhere are Muslims, the majority belonging to the Sunni branch of Islam and the Shafi'i school of Islamic jurisprudence. As with southern Somali coastal towns such as Mogadishu and Merka, there is also a presence of Sufism, Islamic mysticism, particularly the Arab Rifriya Tariqa. Through the influence of the diaspora from Yemen and the Gulf states, stricter Wahhabism also has a noticeable presence. Though traces of pre-Islamic traditional religion exist in Somaliland, Islam is dominant to the Somali sense of national identity. Many of the Somali social norms come from their religion. For example, most Somali women wear a hijab when they are in public. In addition, religious Somalis abstain from pork and alcohol, and also try to avoid receiving or paying any form of interest usury. Muslims generally congregate on Friday afternoons for a sermon and group prayer. Under the constitution of Somaliland, Islam is the state religion of Somaliland, and no laws may violate the principles of Sharia. The promotion of any religion other than Islam is illegal, and the state promotes Islamic tenets and discourages behavior contrary to Islamic morals. Somaliland has very few Christians. In 1913, during the early part of the colonial era, there were virtually no Christians in the Somali territories, with about 100 to 200 followers coming from the schools and orphanages of the handful of Catholic missions in the British Somaliland Protectorate. The small number of Christians in the region today mostly come from similar Catholic institutions in Aden, Djibouti, and Berbera. Somaliland falls within the episcopal area of the Horn of Africa as part of Somalia, under the Anglican Diocese of Egypt. However, there are no current congregations in the territory. 
The Roman Catholic Diocese of Mogadishio is designated to serve the area as part of Somalia. However, since 1990 there has been no Bishop of Mogadishu, and the Bishop of Djibouti acts as Apostolic Administrator. The Adventist mission also indicates that there are no Adventist members. <laughs> <laughs> Largest cities Culture Topic Clan System Somaliland has a population of about 3.5 million people. As of 2006, the largest clan family in Somaliland is the Isaac, making up 80% of the total population. The populations of five major cities in Somaliland, Hargeisa, Burao, Berbera, Eregavo and Gabaili, are predominantly Isaac. Of the minority clans, the Gadabursi of the Deer clan comes second by population, and thirdly the Hati of the Darid clan. The clan groupings of the Somali people are important social units, and have a central role in Somali culture and politics. Clans are patrilineal and are often divided into subclans, sometimes with many subdivisions. Somali society is traditionally ethnically endogamous. To extend ties of alliance, marriage is often to another ethnic Somali from a different clan. Thus, for example, a recent study observed that in 89 marriages contracted by men of the Dulbahante clan, 55 were with women of Dulbahante subclans other than those of their husbands, 30 were with women of surrounding clans of other clan families Isaac, 28, Hawiya, 3, and 3 4.3% were with women of other clans of the Darid clan family Magitine 2, Ogar one. Topic: <laughs> Clan settlements. The Habarawal subclan of the Isaac form the majority of the population living in both the northern and western portions of the Wakuri Galbid region, including the cities and towns of northern Hargeisa, Berbera, Gabaili, Wajale, Arabzio, and Kalabade. The Habarawal also have a strong presence in northern Togdhir region as well, principally around the town of Sheikh and they also partially inhabit the city of Burau as well. The Habar Yunus and Cedargale subclans of the Isaac have a sizable presence among the population inhabiting the southern and eastern portions of Wakuri Galbid region including southern Hargeisa and Salale. The Haba Yunus are also represented well in western Togdhir region, mainly in the towns of Udwain and western Burau. The Haba Yunus also form a majority of the population inhabiting the western and central areas of Sarnag region as well, including the regional capital Eregavo as well as Maid. The Haba Jeklo subclan of Isaac have a large presence in the western and northern parts of Sul, eastern Togdhir region, and southwestern Sarnag as well. The Haba Jeklo form a majority of the population living in eastern Burau as well as in Inabo district and in the towns of Garadag and Cel Afwen, east. Eastern Sul region's residents mainly hail from the Dulbahante, a subdivision of the Hati Confederation of Darid subclans, and are concentrated at Las Anad. The Dulbahante clans also settle in the Buahudal district in the Togtir region, and the southern and eastern parts of Eregavo district in Sarnag. The Warsangali, another Hati Darid subclan, constitute a large number of residents in the eastern Sarnag, and their population is mainly concentrated around Las Kori. The Gadabursi and Issa primarily live in the Ordal region, with the Gadabursi centered at Barama, and the Issa concentrated around the Djibouti border at Zila. Topic. Cuisine It is considered polite for one to leave a little bit of food on one's plate after finishing a meal at another's home. This tells the host that one has been given enough food. If one were to clean their plate that would indicate that one is still hungry. 
Most Somalis do not take this rule so seriously, but it is certainly not impolite to leave a few bits of food on one's plate. Somali breakfast typically includes a flatbread called lahore in jera, as well as liver, toast, haraku, cereal, and porridge made of millet or cornmeal. Lunch can be a mixture of rice or pasta with meat and sauce. Also consumed during lunchtime is a traditional soup referred to as marik, which is also part of Yemeni cuisine. Marik is made of vegetables, meat and beans and is usually eaten with flatbread or pita bread. Later in the day, a lighter meal is served that includes beans, full medam, mufo, patties made of oats or corn, or a salad with more lahore injera. Topic: Arts. Islam and poetry have been described as the twin pillars of Somali culture. Somali poetry is mainly oral, with both male and female poets. They use things that are common in the Somali language as metaphors. Almost all Somalis are Sunni Muslims and Islam is vitally important to the Somali sense of national identity. Most Somalis do not belong to a specific mosque or sect and can pray in any mosque they find. Celebrations come in the form of religious festivities. Two of the most important are Eid al Adha and Eid al Fitr, which marks the end of the fasting month. Families get dressed up to visit one another, and money is donated to the poor. Other holidays include the 26th of June and the 18th of May, which celebrate British Somaliland's independence and the Somaliland region's establishment, respectively. The latter, however, is not recognized by the international community. In the nomadic culture, where one's possessions are frequently moved, there is little reason for the plastic arts to be highly developed. Somalis embellish and decorate their woven and wooden milk jugs hamo, the most decorative jugs are made in sirigabo as well as wooden headrests. Traditional dance is also important, though mainly as a form of courtship among young people. One such dance known as Siyar Somali is a local favorite. An important form of art in Somali culture is henna art. The custom of applying henna dates back to antiquity. During special occasions, a Somali woman's hands and feet are expected to be covered in decorative mendi. Girls and women usually apply or decorate their hands and feet in henna on festive celebrations like Eid or weddings. The henna designs vary from very simple to highly intricate. Somali designs vary, with some more modern and simple while others are traditional and intricate. Traditionally, only women apply it as body art, as it is considered a feminine custom. Henna is not only applied on the hands and feet but is also used as a dye. Somali men and women alike use henna as a dye to change their hair color. Women are free to apply henna on their hair as most of the time they are wearing a hijab. Topic. See also Outline of Somaliland Communications in Somaliland Banknotes of the Somaliland shilling Coins of the Somaliland shilling List of states with limited recognition Somalis in Kenya